it was on this day, at about this time, one year ago, that our Iraqi Dominican sisters and their people fled their convents and homes from the towns and villages of the Nineveh Plain under threat of imminent attack by ISIS. For the past year, they have been living as refugees in Kurdistan, having left all their possessions, homes, and livelihoods behind. Can any of us even begin to imagine what it would be like to have to abandon our homes and jobs at a moment's notice, fleeing with little more than the clothes on our backs? Let us take a moment of silence to call to mind all that our Iraqi sisters and brothers suffered that night and continue to suffer to this day. I would like now to read a letter from our sister Maria Hanna, prioress of the Dominican Sisters of St. Catherine of Siena of Iraq, written on the feast of St. Mary Magdalene, patroness of the Dominican Order. Dear brothers and sisters and friends, as we approach the first anniversary of our displacement, we look back and recall the past 12 months. We call to mind what the Lord has done for us and how he accompanied us throughout the night of August 6, 2014, to be displaced with his people. This memory impels us to pray to the Lord so that we might be enlightened to understand his will for our lives during this crisis. We would like to share with you our vision, our hope, and also our fears, taking this opportunity to thank you for being with and accompanying us in our journey, breathing in us the spirit of courage to continue on our way. Remembering last August, the words of the Psalm 124 come to mind. If the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive. It was really a dark night when we left, not knowing what to take with us or what to leave behind. Christians were everywhere on the road not knowing what direction they should take. The shadow of ISIS hatred surrounded everything. And we understood little of what was happening. When we eventually arrived in Kurdistan, many people were homeless in the street. They were like sheep without a shepherd. After a few days in Erbil, Kurdistan, we realized that our towns in Nineveh had been taken by ISIS. And our return home became a distant, uncertain dream. To add insult to injury, it was not only ISIS that led to our loss and anguish, but also our non-Christian neighbors, our friends in the neighboring villages whom we served and taught. They betrayed us in times of trouble and crisis. It was not easy to accept the fact 
that we were a displaced people, almost abandoned by the Iraqi and Kurdish governments, whose initiatives and acts were not up to the level we expected. The church took responsibility for us, trying to gather and support the displaced people scattered all over Kurdistan. As a Dominican community, realizing how drastic the situation was, we thought of ways to mitigate the crisis and help people with their basic needs. We started projects with empty hands. But with the help of our Dominican sisters and brothers, our friends and different organizations, we were able to provide needy people with food and other items. We distributed blankets and mattresses for 5,000 families. Milk, diapers, houseware, towels, soap, and summer blankets for 10,000 families. Shoes for 740 pupils. 5,000 air coolers, 600 refrigerators, and 400 water coolers. In addition, we thought about the children who were lost in the midst of the chaos. We opened two kindergartens where children can come for free and cooperated with some organizations to open charitable medical clinics. We just got a license to open a primary school and have rented a place for it, which also will be free for the children to attend. Our aim is to show all these displaced people the loving care of the church. We have to admit that our work has not always been manageable. There are so many displaced persons that sometimes we feel as if our work is inconsequential. Also, we were not prepared for this kind of work nor have we skills to deal with it. Most shocking was the unexpected death of 10 of our sisters, most in their 70s, in just three months' time. Despite that, our ministry continues to be strengthened by the Lord who blesses our efforts, no matter how modest. Being occupied with such projects, we do not forget our mission to preach the word of God for our troubled people. Since winter, our sisters have been preparing 400 children for First Communion, and will start preparing another 100 children for First Communion in nearby towns and villages. The sisters continue to go to the camps to minister the people. They give talks, for groups of young people for spiritual exercises, pray with the people, arrange for masses. We still remember vividly the first mass that two of our sisters attended at one of the camps. Since they had no altar, they used a desk. Since they had no altar cloth, one of our sisters covered it with her scapular. The main aim of our work is to make sure that people know that they have not been forgotten or abandoned by the local church. Thank God we have just had our annual retreat. We were 68 sisters. It helped us to make an interior journey and to recognize kindness, mercy, and compassion in ourselves and others through forgiveness and reconciliation. They were very blessed days hopefully for the benefit of each sister. Now, as displaced persons ourselves, we, with the rest of our people, continue to face everyday challenges. We wonder, how long will this last? Our hearts are filled with sadness and overwhelming grief. We wait, but get nothing. We think, but do not understand. What is next? 
No one knows. Where are we going? Everyone is lost. Yes, we have shelter, but our hearts are anxious. Relationships are truly troubled, and the reality is bitter. Most elites have already left, and many are thinking of leaving the country because of the unhealthy condition in which they are forced to live, in small, dark, and damp cubicles. We are now help working with the help of others to try to build 146 apartments on the second and third floor of an unfinished building. We depend on people of goodwill to help us make it possible for our people, displaced from their homes, to live with dignity and hope. We ask you to continue to pray for us, and we thank you for being with us over the past 12 months. May God bless you all. Sister Maria Hanna O.P., Prioress General of the Dominican Sisters of St. Catherine of Siena, Iraq. I invite us now to walk in silent procession to St. Catherine Chapel where we will join with our Dominican sisters and brothers throughout the United States in prayer for peace. So as we walk in procession, we will remember the terror of that night of flight one year ago tonight. The harsh reality that tens of thousands of displaced people still suffer and the courage and fortitude with which our Iraqi sisters have responded to this crisis. They are a living witness to all of God's enduring love.